Have you ever had a dream? What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Annie Zin. I recently graduated from Columbia University and I'm currently working at the Real Marketing Agency in New York. In today's video, I wanted to talk about a topic that I wanted to cover for a very long time. This is such an overdue video, but I hope it will be super helpful and I hope it will be informative. This is gonna be long, so grab a coffee and if you're ready, let's get started. The reason I wanted to make this video is because while I was applying for this master degree, there was not a lot of open sources of information out there for me to search for and I was dying to find any information related to strategic communication because I had a very blurry definition or impression on strategic communication so I was very not confident at applying for this program and I thought making this video will be really helpful for people who are seeking related information or who are applying for a communication major and wanted to get more information on it so hopefully this is helpful for you. Before we jump into talking about this program, I want to give you a little bit of context of myself. So I was born and raised in Shanghai, China. I have my undergraduate in international economics and ended up working in a bank in Shanghai for three years. That was before I applied for this program. And then in the second year, while I was working in the bank, I really wanted to change my career from finance to marketing and I thought I had a huge passion for marketing, especially in digital marketing. That's why I decided to pursue a strategic communication program. So what is strategic communication overall? Actually, strategic communication is a large umbrella. Anything like marketing, communication, advertising can fall under this umbrella. Really, our program teaches a little bit of everything. So I recommend you with a different background, not in communication to apply for this major because if you already learned communication for four years in your undergraduate degree, this program might be too entry level for you. And I will talk a little bit more about that uh, at a later stage. All right, with that being said, let's get started on the overview of the program. Our program is actually a very old program comparing to other programs in SPS at Columbia. Our program was founded in 2002, so it's been 18 years. I would say um, in my class, people who I attended program with, uh, their task scores are usually anywhere between uh, 320 to 330 and then their GPA in undergraduate really vary because if you were fresh off undergraduate in Columbia had a high under, uh, had a high standard on what GPA you have to score at uh, many of my friends just graduated from their undergraduate had a really high GPA at around 3.8, 3.9, and 4.0 out of 4. And other of my friends who had a long experience at work or who had a full work experience in communication, uh, their GPA can vary from anywhere from 3.0 to 4.0. So it's really not depending on the benchmark of the school, it depends on your personal experience. It, on the website, it asks for 0 to 10 years of experience uh, in working in communication related industry. I actually worked in finance. My work wasn't directly related to communication, but I did marketing internship while, not, while I was at undergraduate. A lot of people had very robust full-time experience or internship experience in communication that's very helpful in applying for this program. In terms of class size, uh, for our class size, I'm talking about full-time master's degree in strategic communication because we also have a part-time program and we have an executive program for people with more experiences. For our program, full-time, we have 60 people overall and 30 people 
per class so it's really a small class and everyone has a chance to speak up and I really like the environment and interaction in our class because oftentimes the professors will let students talk more so we can share our opinions and really learn from each other. Another thing I want to highlight is the diversity of this program. I think the admission office really paid attention to our backgrounds, uh, where we were we were coming from. So make sure that we have a very diverse and inclusive class environment. I really enjoyed this multicultural environment. I have some sort of benchmark for you to gauge if this program is a good fit for you. So first of all, I would say this program is for people who have a medium level understanding of communication. So again, if you're an experienced communication major student, this might not be for you. Um, and people who have a passion in writing, public relations, marketing, communication strategy, and would want to pursue a career in any of these industry, this might be the program for you. Oh, the second thing I want to cover today is curriculum. This program requires 36 points for degree completion. Um, it's fall intake only, which means you can only enroll in fall semester. And there are two paths you can take uh, for a full-time student. You can take a 12-month path, which will start in fall, and you will be finishing up all the classes in summer. The other one will be 16-month path. This path also starts in fall, and then ends in the next fall semester. So for the difference between these two paths really is uh, for the 16 month path you will take a practicum or CPT basically an internship that you can take over the summertime and then come back to school for the fall semester for the 12 month path you don't attend an internship I thought it would be more useful to you guys if I just walk you through all the courses I taken as a 2020 graduate so I had I attended this program fall 2018 and then I finished up all the classes in uh, fall 2019. So the first in the first semester, all the classes were mandatory. Uh, there were four core classes that you have to attend. Uh, first one is strategic communication management, and then we have principles in persuasion, the compelling communicator, and industry insider. I would say among these four courses that I've taken, I would deem uh, useful to me would be strategic communication management and the compelling communication. For strategic communication management, we learned a framework that could be really applied to any work in marketing or public relations. And I myself even used it at my internship or even at the work I am doing right now. This is a great class for you to have a concept of strategic communication and roll out a strategic communication plan. And I still remember our final assignment was to plan out a strategic communication plan for a brand to have a marketing plan either in the US or internationally. And the second class I really liked was the compelling communicator. So before I entered this program, my English was pretty broken. I didn't have a really good spoken English, neither did I have a good writing skill. So this class really, really helped me to build up my writing style, my writing skills, and it encouraged you to improve your public speaking and there were assignments that you had to deliver presentation in front of 30 people without scripts. So I thought it really helped me to practice my writing and public speaking skills. The other two classes I wouldn't recommend as much. Principles in Persuasion is a very little class academic. It teaches you about principles in persuasion. Uh, basically how to persuade people and uh, it gives you examples in modern life about how to use those principles but I didn't really remember a lot of them. A lot of principles were and academia things were included in this class. I didn't find it quite appealing to me but it could be helpful. And the fourth one in the industry insider. When I first saw this class I had no idea what does industry insider mean. So it literally was a class for you to have 
company tour in different companies. So we have uh, we had on-site company tours in different companies, in different fields. We had we went to digital agency. We went to media companies. We went to nonprofit organizations. We also went to Broadway theaters. So it so it helped you to build up uh, your first impression or overview of a certain industry but again I didn't find it quite helpful just because every tour was pretty simple and short so I didn't find myself learning anything and I found that all the people from my program who ended up applying to those companies that we toured at never got heard back so I don't know why but that's that. Going to my second semester which is the spring semester the courses I took were, were uh, communication research and insights the reflective leader digital media and analytics and one elective and for elective the one I chose was advanced marketing strategy which is from business school so you can actually choose one elective from any other schools outside of SPS each semester except for the first semester so for any of you who are curious about if you can cross register yes you can for the second semester i really enjoyed the courses like communication research and insights in this class we were taught about how to do conduct research what are the con uh, research methods and we actually did research ourselves which I personally really enjoy so there were qualitative research quantitative research and we had to write report about it even though I didn't have the highest score from this class but I really liked it especially I like the professor of this class and I will talk more about faculty in the second section uh, the next one I found really helpful was digital media and analytics. In this class, we learned a lot of concepts about digital marketing and we learned Google Analytics. We actually used it in our assignments and then we learned Google Data Studio. But the thing that I was a little bit disappointed was this class covered a lot of concepts but we didn't end up practicing as much. For example, we talked about SEM, SEO, paid ads, paid media, but we didn't really learn any further about those concepts. And I had to pick up eventually when I had work, but I thought if I learned it at school, it would be more helpful for me to apply for a job in related areas. Outside of these two classes in spring semester, I definitely wouldn't recommend the reflective leader. I thought I didn't enjoy the class. I didn't enjoy what I was reading for that class and I also didn't remember anything from my um, assignments. And let's talk about the electives I chose for my spring semester. I chose the advanced marketing strategy from business school. It was a very good class I would say overall but the grading wasn't that good. The professor was pretty strict with the grading. And I had the chance to attend this class with all the other uh, MBA students from business school. So it was very, I love the environment. I love interacting with people from so broad areas, not exactly in communication. And I think I learned as much from peers as I learned from the professor. And he did give us a lot of frameworks that we can apply in your work at marketing so I really appreciated it and then finishing up the spring semester for summer I because I chose the 16 month practicum for summer so I was very very lucky to get an internship it was super super hard I remember I sent out like hundreds of resumes and ended up with an internship at McKinsey in their New York office with, uh, as a communication intern. So if you're interested about my experience as a communication intern at McKinsey in New York office, uh, please stick around, subscribe to my channel. I will talk about that later in my different videos. My internship lasted for three months. It started in June, ended up at the end of August. Practicum is technically a class, so your performance still counts. Half of the grading was from um, your class performance, your assignments, and then I think half of the grading uh, depends on the evaluation given by your employers of your internship. 
I ended up getting an A. I think most students got an A, so it wasn't hard. Another thing I want to mention is that even if you take practicum for summer, technically you can still sign up for up to three classes for your summer course. And other than practicum, I also signed up for an elective which was uh, conducted online and it is content strategy. I didn't really like that class. It was really rude for a professor to always end a class an hour before it was supposed to end and I wouldn't say I learned anything from that class. The grading was great though, I got an A, but other than that, nothing positive comment on that class. Entering in my fall semester, because I already took one elective for summer, I only needed to finish three courses to complete my 36 points. One is mandatory, which is capstone project. Capstone is basically your final thesis. I will talk about that a little bit more. To finish up my 36 points, I actually only needed to take one elective outside of at Capstone and I took developing a new idea. So let's talk about Capstone. Capstone is the most useful and practical class I would say that of this program. It's the essence of the whole program. Basically during this project, you choose a company and then you create a whole strategic communication plan for this company that will include everything, anything you learn from this program. Uh, this is super helpful. I definitely learned a lot from Capstone and then we have a small team of four people and I learned so 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 much from my peers. So yeah, if you're interested in Capstone or knowing more about Capstone, please comment down below to let me know. I read all the comments. I will definitely respond to each of your questions. I think that's pretty much it, um, all about the curriculum. And then uh, overall, I think the curriculum is designed pretty well, although, as I said, uh, it didn't go deep towards certain area, for example, public relations or marketing or communication. So if you already studied communication, you definitely would find this curriculum setting too easy or too entry level for you. As I have mentioned, some of the classes I really enjoyed and I talked a little bit more on them and the others I just didn't really like. For professors, I can only give you some facts and research I've done online. I really don't have a lot of comment because I was a little bit disappointed when I learned about this. So for our program, at least strategic communication, all of the professors were actually lecturers. So they were, they are not tenured professors. Most of them are lecturers or adjunct professors. You can find the differences or the definition of adjunct professors and lecturers online. I'm just giving you some of the facts that I learned. Overall, from my perspective, I found most of the lecturers to have a very profound career experiences. Oftentimes they are the leaders or they have a very strong background in certain industry or companies. They have a high title. They are very well known in the industry. I found what I learned in their classes very practical and useful that I can apply to my work eventually. It's not very, you know, literal academic most of them. And I think overall I really enjoyed the class environment. The professors always would encourage us to speak up, provide our own input. And there are also plenty of in-office hours. Uh, there are many ways that you can contact professors, get in touch and have conversations with them or learn more outside of school. You can email them, most of the time they respond very quickly. You can also add them on LinkedIn. They have super robust and strong connections that I think we as students should take advantage of. Alright, so finally, 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 now let's get into finance. Finance is pretty straightforward, you can find all the information online, but I still outlined costs and my personal costs from this program, so let's get into it. For tuition, it says online per point is $2,266. In total, we have 
36 points that we need to complete to finish this program. So all together for tuition, it should be around 81,500. As an international student, especially if you're Chinese, most of Chinese students have to take a English class before you even start a program. And this English class doesn't count of any credits or points of this program and it is worth $5,500. You have to take this in summer, you also have to take it in your first semester. It was really annoying. We ended up arguing with the uh, language department or whatever. So that was my complaint about this program. After tuition, we have a insurance. Uh, the insurance is mandatory for international students. So if you are native students or if you have a green card, you don't really have to get insurance from the school. You can choose other cheaper alternatives. So for me, mine was 923900 per semester and ended up the total cost of insurance was 3700 So other than your costs at school, there are also living costs. Living in New York is not cheap and the living expense I would say around 1500 to 2000 depending on if you live in Manhattan or in other world if you live in a relatively old buildings or if you live in a relatively new buildings and for me my living expense was around 3000 um, so 2000 plus 6 months it will be around $32,000 for my rent and the other expenses per month I would say around a thousand and a thousand is almost impossible. Usually it's around a thousand or fifteen hundred if you don't spend extra money on shopping, buying extra stuff, if you only uh, spend that money on grocery or eating outside it'll be around a thousand or fifteen hundred. If we count it at a thousand for the living expense it'll be sixteen thousand. So tuition, insurance, living expense all together for this program, I would say at a minimum $444,000. Hello everyone, this is adding any, I don't know why I said 400000 it should be 144000 I must be crazy to say that, sorry about it. Which is pretty pricey for a master's degree. I didn't find an average uh, cost of a master's degree, but what I found is a range between uh, 30000 to 120000 So Columbia's master's degree is in between a little bit on the higher end. Sorry everyone, this is editing Annie again. Uh, according to that range, Columbia is definitely over the range provided online. So expensive. I'm sorry, I was losing my mind. I was already losing my mind by that time. I want to provide this information for you because I hope you know that it's a huge commitment for you to get a master's degree. Not only money, time, it also impacts your future career choices. You really have to put a lot of thought before you make a decision. All right, then let's get into our fourth section, which is getting a job. I'll be pretty brief and short in this section because I actually want to have another video uh, to talk about getting a job overall and how to network and career in New York, etc. So I'll be including that in another video to talk in details. Eventually getting a master's degree, you want to find a job and ideally you want to find a job in New York. In this section, I will briefly talk about the resources this program or Columbia overall provides to graduate students in terms of getting a job. In terms of strategic communication or SPS generally, uh, we have a career design lab that is used for helping graduate students to gain more resources or information about career and finding a job. And in our career design lab, it actually provides many of the services including resume editing, career assessment, career design courses, and workshops every week. And also there are mock interviews. You just need to make appointments with your career coaches, have a conversation about your needs in terms of career setting or job hunting. I would say the pros of Career Design Lab is they provided 
a lot of resources and actually they send out emails about what are the jobs or internships that are currently available in some of the big companies however they don't really have any connections they can't recommend you to those companies so it's kind of just like a function of LinkedIn I guess and then another pros is that you can have one-on-one -on -one free coaching session with the advisors there and they are helpful in terms of adding your resume uh, mock interviews and they provide the physical space for you to practice any interviews or asking questions so I found that really helpful another pros is that they offer all kinds of workshops and uh, guest speakers some of the guest speakers are really industry giants and professionals from big name companies so that's sort of an opportunities for you to build personal connections with those people as well. Another pros of the Korea Design Lab is we have a platform called The Hub which functions like LinkedIn. Companies will post jobs or openings on The Hub and you can go there and find jobs or internships uh, that you're interested in and then apply through The Hub. The good side of it is that for example, some companies are specifically looking for applied analytics program students for their internship or full-time job and sometimes companies are looking for strategic communication students for their job openings so they are very targeted at certain programs. This just helps this connection build up even more quickly. And then the cons of Korea Design Lab, I would say they are really lack of human power. So normally one advisor would be responsible for, for two programs and there are tons of students have a career need. So usually uh, in my experience, I had to wait for like eight weeks to have an appointment with my advisor. So the time was really not ideal. Although they provide information about jobs, they don't really have a lot of resources or connections that they can introduce to you to get a referral to uh, have an interview etc so what i found useful was that i had to reach out to alumni personally on linkedin or through our hub to get a connection and to get a referral to further maybe get an interview from that company overall my impression on cbl korea design lab i am pretty sure that they are improving based on the feedback from students and based on their own practices but still there's a long way to go and they don't really have a very strong resources that I thought they would have. My internship and my full-time job was through my own efforts building connections, networking and preparing for interviews etc. I would say I learned from Korea Design Lab workshops or uh, the advisors but eventually I got all the jobs by my own efforts I actually got a lot of questions from people who are interested in applying to this program and found my information online and they listed a few questions here that I want to answer so I will include that in this video as well I really enjoyed my classes, people who attended this program with me. I think they're super smart, friendly. All of them are very talented at the area they're at. I would say I really enjoyed the people attended this program with me. My class, we have 19 Chinese students in the full in the full-time cohort. I heard that people from Curious program, they had 20 or 22 Chinese students, so it's around 20 this number. And yes, you can uh, cross-register for electives in other schools. You can do that in the first semester, but you can do that in your spring or summer semester. Workload is actually really heavy for this program for some reason. I had to allocate around 20 or 25 hours per week outside of school to complete you know reading my assignments and do research and team meetings team meetings are the most time consuming we have a lot of team work and team projects you have to work yourself towards other people's schedule so yeah workload is pretty heavy i would say it's not hard to get an a but for certain classes, for example, writing, public speaking oriented classes, it might be a little harder to get an A because uh, as we're international students and English is not our first language. 
I would say, uh, as I counted, 7 out of 19 Chinese students, which is 37% of Chinese students, decided or they actually stayed in the U.S. for now because, you know, we are still in our OPT period. It doesn't really count that we are staying here. We're just taking this OPT period and taking our time trying to uh, have a little bit of work experience here, but uh, haven't decided either we are staying here or we are going back uh, to China. I think around 20, 20 people out of 60 decided to use CPT. Columbia definitely has a super strong alumni um, network and we actually have an alumni association where you have access to all the alumni that have graduated, have graduated or haven't graduated and through this association I met incredible people who introduced me to get an interview and who introduced me to different companies and we ended up becoming good friends even we didn't attend, uh, we didn't attend school at the same year and you can add your alumni to LinkedIn most of the time they are super friendly and try to help you as much as possible so just don't be afraid to reach out even you thought you were strangers I'm not sure if my information is correct but I think most of the res uh, housing resources provided by school prioritize uh, undergraduate first so Graduate students tend to apply apartments on their own outside of school, but I also have a friend who applied to school housing and got an apartment that he didn't really like and he ended up getting another apartment on his own. If you have more questions and you wanted to learn specifically on anything, please please comment down below. And if you already stayed so long until now, please subscribe to my channel, give a thumb up to this video, and you can add me on social media. Uh, don't forget to comment down below. I will read each comment and respond to your comments. So yeah, I hope this video is really helpful and please let me know if you're you want to know anything about this program or about master degree in Colombia overall and I'll see you next video. Bye!